Welcome to the RV Podcast. And in this episode, we are going to find out why so many different RVers are thinking about buying their own property so they can have a home base to go exploring. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. We are the Wendlands. I'm Mike, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Hello, Michael. Can you believe this is the last episode of 2021? I can't wait till we hit episode 400. Well, this is episode 376, so you got a little ways to go. A little ways to go. 377 will be coming out January 5th, and this is a good time for us to remind you of our holiday schedule uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break after this podcast. Uh, we're going to take the week off between Christmas and New Year's. We try and do that every year, uh, primarily for our team. Our uh, team works so hard with creating content all year round, all of our different platforms. So uh, no podcast next week, no Ask Us Anything uh, and we still will have um, daily uh, posts on the blog, rvlifestyle.com, but we're going to take a break. No newsletter as well. And everything comes right back after the first of the year. So um, just in case you're looking for us next week, we are going to be goofing off. <laughs> That's our schedule. <laughs> These have been trying times for so many people. Uh, and the world is far from normal. But um, it's our prayer that you have uh, peace and comfort uh, as we celebrate the birth of Christ this year. Hopefully you're with family and friends and uh, our wishes for nothing but good things for you in 2022. It's getting better. It it's is getting better. It's all getting better. Yep, it is. Uh, so a little bit of a break uh, for us next week. Uh, we'll resume again our normal schedule starting January 2nd. That's uh, Sunday, uh, right after New Year's. And we will be uh, doing our Ask Us Anything at 7 p.m. on Sunday. So join us then. In case you missed it, over the weekend, we posted a comprehensive update and I think kind of a fun video on all that we've been able to accomplish uh, on our new RV property in Tennessee, uh, where we hope to carve out a, a few camping spots, one for ourselves. And so we've got a pad or flat area for a couple of uh, friends to join us from time to time. Um, we are really excited about that. And in the process of that, we had sort of a, a mini meetup. That was, I was, I think a dozen people showed up. It was fun seeing uh, other RVers and friends. And they were talking to us about uh, wanting to do the same thing that we did. Have, uh, maybe not just in one spot, but in several spots of the country, their own RV lots or property where they knew they always had a spot and uh, they could use that as a base to go exploring from. So uh, we were really fun. It was really fun for us to meet other people, find out that our idea that we want to do is uh, shared by a lot of other people. And you'll meet some of them and hear their stories uh, coming up in our interview of the week. And I think what I like about our spot that we picked out is that it's just a couple miles outside a charming little town of Linden. So Linden has a few things that I want. Yep, that, Linden, Tennessee. Linden, Tennessee. And then if you want real excitement, Nashville's 89 miles away. So that's a that's why that when we talk about a home base, it's not that you're going to necessarily permanently live there. Although a lot of people said they want to build a house there eventually. Um, but it's a place that you know you can get in. You can stay as long as you want. It's your land, your way. So we're really excited about it. Uh, I learned something just uh, today that, uh, you know, we got power coming down that road. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't, go to rvlifestyle.com and uh, we'll put a link in the show notes and in the description below and you can you can see our video. But uh, there's a little road that goes by our property and electricity is going in. And with the electricity, they're also putting in fiber optic cable. We thought that that Ooh. would be way later in the year, but it looks like it's going to be real soon, which makes it great for us because we do so much remote work. I think everybody wants that. They do. Uh, there's been a lot of comments on our RV Lifestyle Facebook group about um, a post uh, that uh, a woman uh, named uh, Deb wrote. And uh, Deb was talking about uh, a policy that some RV parks have that restrict smaller RVs from staying there. 
and uh, uh, Deb uh, had a pretty interesting uh, post that uh, she wrote about that, and it uh, prompted a number of people to, um, to discuss it. Uh, do you want to read her, her post? Okay, I'll be happy to read it. Can anyone enlighten me on why some parks only take class A's and or fifth wheels, but not small campers? I understand why old, beaten-up campers are not allowed, but if you have a brand new or well-kept older, smaller camper, why? The big rigs often have uh, washers and uh, dishwashers and two toilets and take a lot of AC, so they're sucking a huge amount of water and power. The smaller rigs are, are not generally going to do all this, so why lock them out? I am not being a smart aleck. I am truly curious why the camper snobbery. Plus, we have a 22-foot camper. It has a back patio that would make it about 29 feet. So does that qualify as over 25 feet, as some park requests? Well, I think the answer is, uh, as, as a number of other people talked about, is what you, you alluded to, Deb, and that's snobbery. <laughs> uh, some of the parks have come to the idea that they think that uh, bigger means better and uh, that, you know, somebody who spends a lot more money for a big Class A, which isn't always true, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not always true. No. I but, think that might have been the original thought, that Class A's cost more. And, more, and were more luxurious and a higher quality clientele. Yeah. I think there was a lot of that junk going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is uh, happening less and less. We have encountered it uh, back in our Class B days. Yes. That, Yo, you can't camp here. You're in a class, a camper van. <laughs> you know, our camper, camper vans van cost more than a lot. Most of those. class to be class A's. They a lot do of those class A's. Yeah, they do. But uh, it's just snobbery, and I think uh, you're not missing anything by not staying at a place like that, Deb. So if you encounter that, uh, count it uh, as a blessing because you don't want to hang around with those kind of people, right? Uh, there were a lot of other interesting comments on our Facebook group about that. So, But the thing is that somebody owns that campground, and that's what they established. That's their rule. Yeah. So just move on, and, and yeah. don't let it get you down. Don't let it depress you. But when you think of it logically, you think they could have a rule for how old the yeah. unit is. And but that then makes I guess sense. That, you know. that maybe that gets too complicated. Maybe they like the idea of everybody in the same length. And and we have same found spots. some really old RVs that have been restored and that are just fabulous and, and better than quality than the newer ones that are out there. But, you know, um, a lot of RV parks were built by people who just wanted to make money. They weren't even necessarily RVers. And so they had some crazy rules. You're not seeing as much of that. Even when we first started doing this about 10 years ago, we see much less. But we experienced ourselves and... Deb, just count your blessings and move on. Just move on. Hey, uh, we have one other thing we want to uh, point out that came we saw in our Facebook group this week. And this is a warning from one of our uh, members of our RV Lifestyle Facebook group named Kerry Flynn. And Kerry wrote this. He said, I thought I should share a warning to motorhome owners. The theft of catalytic converters has ramped up. If your rig is open, stored, or parked in a public place unattended, you may want to check it off it often or set up a security uh, procedure for it. That is a frightening thought yeah. to think that uh, people are stealing things. And that brought a lot of response. Several of our of our members had uh, had had people say stuff. Yeah, Mark Henderson sent us a note saying had mine stolen about a year ago. Four thousand eight hundred dollars in repairs. And uh, a reader named Mike Bliss said mine was stolen in July of 2021 from a secure storage facility, he had quotes around that, a $100 deductible, $1,700 total cost for replacement, and four weeks without his RV as it was getting replaced. He said, we had just purchased it and we were taking a trip in two weeks and the rig was in storage when it, uh, only six days when the theft occurred. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, that's timely. That's happening all over with automobiles and everything, but uh, what, why don't they put like, uh, serial numbers on these things, uh, a database so that when somebody buys them at a junkyard, they run the serial number and they can say that's stolen. Um, it seems like the industry could, could because somebody is buying these stolen things and they know they're stolen. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's hope that they uh, they crack down on, on all of that. We should also point out whether we're coming to you from the RV today. It's uh, just before uh, Christmas 
and um, we are finally getting all of that uh, work from that little accident we had uh, in our uh, house. We're getting the carpeting installed today. And uh, Bo is outside barking. Bo's doing security. Yeah. Uh, Bo yes. is outside the RV in the snow, rolling around, having a great time. And uh, he's looking at him looking. He's looking to us for validation. You know? <laughs> but getting back to our house, I don't think we're ever going to be done. No. They, this one day carpet thing is turning into two now. It is. And uh, they also um, took off everything in our studio. You know, if you've been a regular, you know, uh, earlier this summer, I I did a complete build of a video and recording studio, and I was so proud to finally have it all set up. It takes forever to tweak it. But with the carpeting, Jennifer said, mine wouldn't match, so I had to take everything apart. I'm being a poor baby here. But, <laughs> so I don't have a yeah. studio. <laughs> yeah, It's a good thing we're off next week because I'll have to spend all my time Rebuilding it. I don't know. I might be out at midnight trying to buy Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hope there's something left. All right. Hey, when we come back, our interview of the week. So stay with us. Whether you're staying close to home or wheeling across the country, RVers need the best value in medical coverage. Peace of mind for RVs.com has a Medicare enrollment specialist with 16 years of experience and can tailor your Medicare plan selection with the choices that matter most to you. So you can keep your doctors and make sure your prescriptions and medical care are covered wherever you travel. Peace of mind for RVs.com will help you get the most out of your Medicare coverage, choose just the right options, and they can even get you squared away with all the things that Medicare may not cover, like specialized emergency transportation coverage, air ambulance coverage, dental, vision, hearing, all at the best bang for the buck and tailored specifically for the RV lifestyle. You can find out more and get all your questions answered by going to peaceofmindforrvs.com. That's peaceofmindforrvs.com. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10. When you buy $99 or more in merchandise, you'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. All right, welcome back to the interview of the week. Jen went out and got Bo during that commercial break. And now he is in the RV with us. and <laughs> Looking out the window and quite indignant that he's not being valued. Yes, he is. He is. Uh, all right, the interview of the week. Uh, we did a meetup on uh, our property in Tennessee, and we met a lot of people from all over the country, and many of them had the same dreams that we have. And so we thought it'd be fun to record their thoughts. So we uh, interviewed a bunch of them and found out that we are not the only one and that there is indeed a trend uh, for oh. RVers to buy their own RV lots and uh, use them as a home base. Why buy property? Why not just go around and stay in state parks and national parks and all that stuff? That's a good question. Uh, some of it's kind of a, an investment. We looked at uh, our 401ks and decided that uh, they're just gonna kind of be sitting there. We figured we could buy some property and, but also gives us the freedom to kind of, you know, do a lot more than just staying um, at RV parks. You know, we also thought that with our property, we would put more RV lots on it and uh, hopefully, you know, open it up to other people to come stay in, um, on our property and possibly even an income out of it. Yeah. And do you think you would do this in other other places as well? We uh, actually that's kind of our thinking. goal. That's what we wanted to do. Um, Just a couple spots that we can hop to. Have you found problems getting reservations at campsites and campgrounds? 
they're busy yeah it's 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 hard to find so we've kind of been lucky but we have a small camper right now and a jeep and so we can off grid and um well, it's boondock and, boondock stuff. and mm -hmm. mainly we've camped mostly in washington state um so we haven't done a lot of cross-country camping um but i think more it was just a situation where our 401ks were sitting there and property feels safe and we know where the money's at and then we're going to have someplace beautiful to come stay um and we'll go from there yeah but yeah. also it's it's nice to, to have spots kind of all over the nation that we could uh spend a little time here spend a little time there and you know we're not just tied down to one area so and we looked at um one of the other spots we were looking at is near phoenix arizona and um, it's beautiful, but it's pre-made. It's a it's a it's property a with a casita RV resort, a res RV resort um, with a casita on it, and and it's all done for you. And it's a great investment as well. But we also like the idea of having a piece of property that we can do whatever we want, like our plans for too. Do you so, see yourselves uh, building? something more permanent I, I think eventually yeah we, we, that's a possibility but right now uh, you know we're I just think if anything I we want to put some sort of at least like a clubhouse or a, a communal property that could be ours but also other people could use it if we have other RV plots on the land one of the problems so many RVers have is finding a place to stay what's that been like with you guys uh, from Texas you're from Texas yeah, yeah. It's really hard, and even on uh, leases, it's getting very expensive, uh, primarily because there's been a massive boom in RVs, and you have long-term leases right now getting into $1,000 a month uh, for six months, and that's if you l rent long-term. Uh, we spent the summer two months, and we spent over $4,000 in RV fees. Wow. In, in obviously peak places like Ketchum, Wyoming, Moab, you know, it's expensive. How much, say that again. I, I, yeah, four thousand dollars in two months of RV camping fees, and some of the sites are now like in Wyoming, they two hundred dollars a night. Really? Yeah. That's and crazy. And so it's getting crazy uh, finding a place to do full time RV. So if you want to do full time RV, you need to have a place where you can spend months and not incur those costs. And also in Texas, with high property tax. You need to then think about that too. We were chatting about how much your taxes are in Texas on yep. just a small one acre lot. One acre lot has no road to it. You need an ATV to get to it. There will be no utilities to it for till July of next year. And that's $3,700 a year of taxes. For one acre. That one you have acre. no use of, <laughs> that you cannot access, that has no sewer to it, no water, no nothing. It's just a raw land. So that's what brings you to Texas or to Tennessee. That's what brought to Tennessee, yeah. And the we, low property tax. We, we should also point out that you guys are originally from South Africa. Yes. You both work in the tech field. Yes. So uh, the ability to work remotely is what's Absolutely. leading to this. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a complete catalyst. What do you what do you have for an RV? So we have uh, Lux, uh, Lux fifth wheeler. Uh, it's a big one, 44 feet, uh, 24,000 pounds, triple axle, uh, beautiful RV. Talk about uh, how you see having your own RV base camp. Is, and yeah. I, I would assume that you're, yeah. you're, you're going to be able to use it. Are you looking at one place or different places? We'll probably look at different places. I think something that we want to do is have a place for the winter, which is what this property that we just bought today is for is to be the winters here and then summers as literally the snow melts north to go up north you know visit places like glacier or even one thing that's on our list is i call it the canadian rockies up there in banff mm -hmm. uh, you can only do that in summer so we want to do those trips that really are only accessible in summer with rv but then have a base camp for five or six months where we can save money by not traveling. <laughs> yeah, but also have a place where we can share with our friends because yes. we've made a lot of friends within this all, like this last few months and yeah. it's um, we, we're definitely going to say hey come over from yeah. Texas or from wherever. And yeah. how, how much property did you buy? 
uh, 30 acres. That's a big hunk of land. Yeah, but we already specked out five slabs for our friends. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we saw a great uh, feature that another park did in New Braunfels in Texas. They built a tiki bar behind the slab. <laughs> and something that is really nice, they put fences in the backyard. So all RV owners have dogs. Yeah. So now your site has got a fence in the back with the tiki bar. It's got a fan in the roof, got a barbecue pit. And we really think about that where it's more like a resort and our friends can come and use the facility because they are in the same need as us. And, you know. How big of a trend is this, uh, as you've traveled and, and met with other RVers, to own your own land instead of just going from park to park and hoping to find a reservation, hoping to be able to get in? I think this year it really spiked. Uh, we met several folks that used to come to a particular park each year that they couldn't get reservations in April for July. And they used to get it their spot now they couldn't get any spot in april and so when we talked to our friends our rv group back down in texas they all were talking about this that uh, they're going to buy land so that they have a base camp and have some infrastructure there maybe some storage you know maybe some places where they can leave their boat or something so uh so these are our uh, our new neighbors and we are uh, pretty excited about this and uh, we're gonna have a great time with oh them. absolutely yeah. are. But gonna... the most important thing is remember they have the tiki bars so when you come to visit us that's where we go that's the plan, right? yeah that's the plan <laughs> even if we just have one we're gonna invite you guys over to come and help build it <laughs> What was so fun about meeting these folks is a lot of these people are going to be our neighbors and uh, we're going to plan things to do together. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was really fun. We put in our driveway and uh, a lot of them want to do the same thing. A lot of them are thinking about building and as you heard their stories, uh, uh, many of them are looking for places in different parts of the country, as are we. We got so excited about, about building this place in Tennessee, we're thinking that, well, it's pretty hot and humid in Tennessee in the summer. Where are we going to go in the summer? And so we're thinking about buying property in Michigan. So we have some our own dedicated RV base camp in Michigan and then we have Tennessee and who knows maybe we'll get one out east. Uh, that'd be kind of fun too. I was thinking uh, Montana. Montana. It's a long Maine. drive. So we need three more to get. Yeah. That's a, that's a dream. Uh, anyway if uh, you want more information about all this just go to uh, the website rvlifestyle.com. We've done a whole bunch and on our YouTube channel We've got a whole playlist of all the different steps and you can follow the, the all the different uh, how we bought found the property and why we bought it and what we're doing and we'll keep updating that as we go back and have other features and if you want to learn more about it you can learn about it uh, uh, through uh, myrvland.com that's the development in Tennessee all right when we come back uh, the news of the week have you had it with overbooked, overcrowded campgrounds? Then check out Harvest Hosts, where RVers can overnight for free at more than 2,400 wineries, farms, microbreweries, golf courses, and attractions. Harvest Host is a membership service for those with self-contained RVs looking for unique, beautiful, and peaceful overnight camping experiences across North America. When you become a member of Harvest Host, you can camp for free at all these places. Jennifer and I are Harvest Host members, and we've made so many great memories at Harvest Host locations. There's no charge for camping, and your Harvest Host membership fee is easily made up with just a couple of stays. Plus, you have awesome places to stay. If you use our special affiliate link of rvlifestyle.com slash HH, you'll automatically get 15% off the cost of your membership. That's 15% off, but you must use the special link, rvlifestyle.com slash HH. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. 
Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. All right, welcome back, everybody. Time now for the RV News of the Week. And if you think the roads are crowded out there, well, they are. AAA is uh, predicting 109 million Americans will travel this holiday season. That's nearly a 34% increase from last year. People traveling about 50 miles or more between December 23rd and January 2nd. And the majority of uh, the travelers are going to be on the road. About 100 million, though, are going to be flying by plane. So that's up, too. And uh, many who canceled their holiday celebrations last year are not going to let anything stand in the way of doing it this year so we're going to be out there yep uh lots of people out and uh merry christmas to everybody uh, one thing that uh, even though gas prices we noticed on our last trip a week ago have started to drop a little bit uh they're still about a buck 25 more per gallon this year than they were last year but it's not just um airline travel and it's not just road travel uh uh, the Campgrounds of America did a survey, and I, I find this really significant. They found that 8.69 million camping households are planning a cold weather camping trip this year. Now, that is phenomenal because every time I tell everybody about how much we love to camp in the winter, I get all these emails or all these snide little uh, joking uh, comments on my post that that's for you. My solution to the winter is. Head south till it's warm, and, and a lot of you don't like snow, but we're going camping the first weekend of uh, January up to Tequamanon Falls. But KOA, Campgrounds of America, uh, did this research uh, in December, and they found uh, 56 million households would camp in 2021 uh, compared you know, during the, the cold, weather, cold weather months compared to uh, about 48 million. That's a 16% increase. And it says that it's um, camping is now uh, basically a year-round activity, uh, something that we couldn't agree with more. Uh, we've winter camped in the snow for years. It is so much fun to get out. You can do it. The kids will love it. You know, you'll love it. Get out there and get rid of some energy and run around in the snow and the cold weather and make memories. And a good way to do that is January 1st because there's a special event happening in January. Every January 1st. Yeah. And this gets bigger and bigger too. Yeah, this is getting larger. Uh, many state parks throughout the country will be sponsoring first day hikes on January 1st providing such things as free parking, uh, no entrance fee to get in, organized hikes in beautiful locations for those who want to start the new year off outdoors. But now a lot of those hikes, you need to call ahead and get a reservation because as you know, everybody's out there doing this. So this is the 11th year of the First Day Hikes promotion, sponsored by America's State Parks. Yep. So different activities planned. Yep. Check out. So, uh Go to bed early New Year's Eve and get out there on your first day hike. I think Remember that's Remember when we used to jog a mile? We did a New Year's no, run. No, there was a mile run that the kids used to do, and then we did a 10K. A 10K. Uh, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. And on Bell Isle, yep. and it was cold. And it was fun. It was, it was fun. fun. Um, just as an indication for the new year, uh, we've been talking about this for quite a while, and you heard some of those RVers that we interviewed in the interview of the week talk about how crowded it is trying to get reservations. Well... Uh, more statistics that, that are uh, proven that to be true. Jellystone Parks said, get this, their advanced registrations, their advanced registrations for 2022 are up 76%. Wow. That is just amazing. Um, so this, this camping boom, which really started in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, that is showing no signs of ending. Uh, Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park <laughs> Campgrounds advanced 2022 reservations up 76%. We have heard, uh, anecdotally, of course, because the industry yeah. doesn't want you all to know this, but we have heard that many of the spots in at least the desirable areas are all booked up, all booked up for 2022. And uh, I bet there isn't a day that goes by now that I don't get email or I don't see posts on our Facebook group or on our social media channels that people are so frustrated. They're trying to get reservations for even uh, early fall of 2022 and they're finding their weekends are full. So 
Um, this is a problem that is going to require people to think about other things like uh, um, Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome and Boondocking and uh, maybe even like buying your own land. Um, speaking of which, oh, here's a commercial on uh, MyRVLand.com, which uh, can help you do just that. Have you ever thought of owning your own land for camping or a homestead? Tennessee Land and Lakes is selling off a 1,500-acre estate known as the Woodlands at Buffalo River in large acreage properties from 5 to 126-acre homesteads. Unlike most properties, these are virtually unrestricted, allowing year-round living in an incredible natural setting. These are multi-use properties. You can camp on them, build a dream house if you want, a cabin, a barn, a garage. It's your land and there's no HOA, no rules. It's your property, your way. There's high-speed fiber optic internet available, wooded trails and big views surrounded by the most popular destination spots in Tennessee like Nashville, Kentucky Lake and the Buffalo River. The pricing starts at $69.9. There's even great financing. Jennifer and I like it so much that we bought there. Take a video tour and get the details at MyRVLand.com. Welcome back. And uh, now it's time for questions of the week. And this is a question from our friend Brad Olson from Hawaii. Now, Brad is not RVing in Hawaii, but he is there. And he had a question about RVing and he sent it in this week. Here's Brad. Hi, Mike and Jennifer. This is Brad Olson checking in, Kanapali Beach on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Question for you this time. Many months ago, you did a great story on three major RV uh, manufacturers and the issues they were having. My question is, are you able to do a follow-up story with them perhaps at the Tampa RV show in January and see if things have improved since then? Just want to say thank you again for all that you do for the RV industry. We are truly appreciative of it, and we'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Well, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to Brad, and I think that, could we get a Hawaii uh, RV show? I think there's any way we could work that. That looks pretty good to me to go over to the island. You know, we were invited to, to come RVing as a guy who rents vans there, and why didn't we do that? Because of Bo. Oh, yeah. Couldn't bring Bo. Anybody want to watch Bo? So we can go. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, Brad, uh, I don't have to wait until the show to do it because uh, some of those manufacturers are not even going to be at the show because they just felt it isn't right to show new product when they have a long backlog. The backlogs are just astounding throughout the whole RV industry. If you want a brand new leisure travel van, it's a minimum, I would say, of a two-year wait right now. Uh, more likely, uh, the dealer will cite you a three-year wait. C can, can you fathom that, a three-year wait for a new product? Um, Thor Industries just had an announcement out that they have an 18 plus billion dollar, 18 billion with a B, uh, backlog in orders for 2022. Um, and, and that is just amazing. It's going to take until 2023, they say, and that's with full capacity in manufacturing to catch up with those back orders. That's from Thor, and they're the world's largest RV maker. They make uh, Jayco, Airstream, uh, Airstream, Dutchman, Heartland, Tiffin, Tiffin, uh, Keystone, Keystone uh, many more. So there's a, at least a year backlog on many of their products right now. And so what's causing that backlog? Consumer demand and the supply chain. Yeah, and it, and that is just. Uh, there's not much you can do about it. it it's just an amazing thing. I mean, that's, and that's across the board. Uh, I had one other question. and Actually, several of you asked. You saw the video that we did uh, on our property. And if you uh, were watching that, you saw I had an app on my smartphone that showed the property and it had property lines written. And everybody says, what's that app? I need to get that app. Well, it's a cool app. It's called My Guru Apps. G-U-R-U Apps. Uh, and I, mine is my guru. Was it? Uh, it's the. I have the pro version of it. And I don't remember what it costs you a little bit every month, but it is a really uh, cool Guru Maps Pro is the name of the app. And I don't know if you can. Those of you watching on video, but uh, there is a uh, quick look at my screen, and you can see like our property line there is uh, is all drawn out right there, and it shows you where you are. And in and in real time, it keeps track 
of where you are as you walk. So we used it in the video to walk our property line. But my point is you can get that map. Um, uh, the company that is developing our property, they give all the owners um, a file that will, that will show them their map boundaries like that. But the map is handy for anything. What I really like about it is if you don't have cell phone service, you can use that map and it's got topography views. You can download maps uh, from almost any part of the country. It is a, it's a great, great feature. And uh, I'll put it in the description below and uh, you can check that out. But uh, that answers a question that many of you were asking. All right, that's it. I want to remind everybody we're taking the, uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's off. So no podcast next week. Uh, we return with another podcast episode on Wednesday, January 5th. And for those attending the Tampa RV Super Show, which is January 19th through the 22nd, 22nd. we'll be there. We're going to be there on Thursday. And we'll have a meetup for everybody Thursday the 20th. Uh, and that's uh, at a little pavilion. They call it the Beer Hall, but it's just south of the little lake that's right on the fairgrounds, right on the showgrounds. And we'll be there at 2 p.m. Thursday the 20th, and we'll hang out for an hour or so with everybody. So come see us. And you might see us wandering around the show as well. We're going to stop by a couple of the other booths and, and visit with folks as well. But that's the one uh, that we're pushing, and that's the Thursday uh, on the 20th. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We, uh, we want to thank you for all of the encouragement you've given us this year. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and make some happy trails.